We're going to build the best football team in the SEC Conference. We're going to build the best football program in the SEC Conference. You have now arrived at Stadium in Gale. The snap, the kick, it's been blocked! You have now arrived at Stadium and Gale. Boys and girls, ladies and gents, welcome to another episode of Stadium and Gale. It's your favorite Uncle Silk. It's Dan. And Del Torre. We're recording on a Sunday, man. It's a little different, but not the same corner at the same time, but we're on the same corner. How you feeling, Dan? Feeling good. I was actually at a concert last night, so I'm a little uh, you know, still recovering from that. I had a, a grand ambition to hit up the Peloton for the first time this morning. That did not happen. Mm. Uh, so we're going to uh, to get back at it hopefully after this. But the, a Sunday morning Stadium and Gale show. That's a rain Just waking check up. on the Peloton. Just waking up or you did, haven't fallen asleep? No, no, no. I fell asleep at a reasonable hour. It was just, nice. you know, you know just, just what happened. You know, you shouldn't wake up feeling feeling a bean, you know? Yeah, I feel that. <laughs> how, how you feeling, Nick? Good, good. We're uh, recording on Super Bowl Sunday. Um, mm. Sounds like you have the same kind of nasty weather that we do. It's been gross, but uh, looking forward to the Super Bowl and uh, and uh, Valentine's Day. So that's why we're recording uh, on I Sunday. Hate to be, I hate to be a bearer of bad news or carrier of bad news, but... We saw, fellas. We recording. We getting this 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 podcast off because we don't want to record on Valentine's Day, but we're willing to record on Super Bowl Sunday. Mm. Yeah, we got yeah, out. What's really going on? Early. What's really going on at ten a.m. on Super Bowl Sunday? No, that's true. What's going? That's true. Valentine's I mean, Day Dan, on Monday. Dan, also, keep the ladies happy. That's true. That's true. Yeah, we we know what we know what comes first. Um, you guys doing anything special for Valentine's Day tomorrow? I'm actually going out today. I'm, I want to skip okay. miss the crowd. Wife looked at me nuts when I said we was recording Stadium Miguel this morning because she knows the schedule. But I was like, I don't have to record tomorrow, so we can just vibe around, lounge around the couch and do our thing tomorrow around here. But we're gonna, we're gonna step out today, go grab some dinner somewhere, uh, just just hang out and enjoy the city a little bit, trying to trying to escape the the crowd for for actual Valentine's Day. What you got going? Yeah, no, I got uh, I got stuck making the reservation on Valentine's Day tomorrow. So there's a, a place called Ava here in Tampa uh, that we're gonna go check out tomorrow night. But um, but yeah, not usually a Valentine's Day guy. You know, take it you know the day before, the day after. You know, fighting to sit you know and and pay prime dollar to sit six inches away from the table next to you is not something that I consider right. uh, romantic, fun, or enjoyable. But you know, alas, here we find ourselves on a, on a prefix menu. Where your yep. elbows are touching, you know, the person next to you. Yeah. Um, not doing anything tomorrow. Probably cook at home. Um, and then uh, uh, have a wedding the following weekend. So uh, maybe, you know, do something nice there. Get dressed up in a suit. I'm in the wedding. So, you know, the Man, sharp. I love going to weddings, man. That's my shit. I got a, a bunch coming yeah. up. I have one this weekend, one in April, and another one in September. Hmm. Hmm. I got I got one right now planned for Vegas in May. When I say the that weekend, the bachelor party, the, 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 the little wedding, the little white wedding. chapel, the wedding. So the wedding that or the the um, the bachelor party I went to last weekend that was in Utah. His wedding is in uh, Vegas in May. Seems like he got those flip. He, I'll tell you what. He, not he not is, if you want Elvis to officiate your wedding. He knows exactly <laughs> what he's doing. I, I don't know what he has planned for this wedding. I mean, they've got gobs and gobs of money, both family, and then they both work as investment bankers. Oh, so I don't know best, what this wedding's going to be like, but this yeah, is not going to be. I'm going to be come back struggling, boys, to say the least. You got to invite two. You got to plus yeah. two. 
Like, yeah. Oh, you want to come along? Yeah, it sounds like it. <laughs> I need to see. I need to see the dedication that I showed Dan uh, sitting in the uh, Centurion Lounge in the Vegas airport uh, with one eighth of your voice trying to podcast. Yeah. Well, so we'll be coming back Sunday, but right now the plan is to fly out. Everybody's going to fly out Wednesday. Uh, we'll do something Thursday or Wednesday night, probably low key, but Thursday night we'll go out. Friday's the wedding, and then Saturday Tiesto's at the the pool at the hotel that we're staying at. And then Zed is also performing uh, Sunday night or uh, Saturday night. So the plan is to do all of those. So we'll see if I survive or make it to any or all of those things. Yeah. I, I advise y'all not to go out that Thursday night, man. I could just see a uh, hangover <laughs> four happening or something. Wow. But uh, no, it'll be, it'll be fun. But uh, well, let's get on with the show. Uh, we've got Colby Halter from the Gators joining us, but before or the Gators baseball team, pardon me. But before we do that, Let's give a shout out to our friend, Alan Horn, uh, who's also a former Florida Gator baseball player who sponsors this podcast with State Farm. Uh, Alan is based out of Jasper, Georgia. He specializes in auto, home, renter's life, business insurance, and retirement planning in Georgia, Florida, Tennessee, and Alabama. Check him out, alanhorninsurance.com. That's A-L-A-N-H-O-R-N-E, insurance.com. Or give him a call, 706 692-2888. Follow him on Twitter or Instagram at SF Agent Allen H or on Facebook at Allen Horn State Farm Agent. So with that, we will bring on Colby Halter onto the show. Colby, how are you doing this evening? Are this (laughs) this evening? Yeah. (laughs) Yeah, I'm doing awesome. How are you guys? Good. Good. Good, good, man. Uh Colby, we're excited Colby. to have you on here first. Go ahead, Nick. Um, well, I'm just going to throw you under the bus, Dan, to start. Uh, Colby, oh, Dan good. Dan is not a fan of Jacksonville. Um, oh, you you being from the you being from the town, I, I would like you to, to tell Dan why Jacksonville is a good city that he should visit more often. Yeah, man, that's mm-hmm. a shame. Uh, you must not have been doing it right. Yeah, <laughs> Beach, Jackson, Jacksonville he, don't know, Beach, he, he don't know where the crab spot's at. Yeah. <laughs> no, there's a bunch of fun stuff to do in Jacksonville. Um where in Jacksonville did you go? I've, I've been all over. Um, <laughs> just, I've been to the beaches. He's just a hater, Colby. He's just I've a been, hater. I've been downtown. Yeah. Uh, where I've been, I think I've been to everywhere Jacksonville has to offer. Listen, I'm I'm a fan of, of the state of Florida. I love mm-hmm. it here. Um, so I, I want to preach the good vibes and the good good things that are going on in Jacksonville. I just haven't been able to find them just yet. Jeez. All right. Well. I have to show you a couple things. There's some fun stuff. Yeah. All right. Dan, Dan's really setting the tone to this interview. Yeah, man. I got tell you that, bro. Nick's, Nick's the one that threw it out there. I'm, I'm trying. Yeah. I'm trying my best. You know. Uh, Colby, want to uh, want to talk a, a little bit about just kind of your um, you, you you growing up, obviously in yeah. Jacksonville, going to Bishop Kenny. Uh, ultimately, ending up thinking that uh, happened. How did it, it come about that that you decided to? Uh, to make it over your way to uh, to Gainesville. Yeah. Um, so growing up, I was a Gator fan pretty much my whole life. You know, I grew up watching Tim Tebow and Percy Harvin, all those guys uh, play football and stuff. And my, my whole family has pretty much been Gator fans uh, my whole life. So I don't know. I grew up playing a lot of sports in Jacksonville. And uh, about the time high school rolled around and stuff, um, recruiting started picking up. And I actually took my first visit to FSU. And that was, like, something that I never thought I'd even do. But uh, I was surprised how much – or I was surprised that I kind of actually thought FSU was, like, a nice campus and uh, I don't know all that. But then, like, probably a week later, I visited Florida um, and I never looked back. You know, I kind of decided right then and there that this is what I wanted to do. Um, so he's obviously a really good recruiter and I liked Craig a lot. And um, at the time, they had Brad Weitzel. But, uh, yeah, no, it was just a good staff and – um, you know, Gainesville was somewhere that I wanted to be. Not too far from home either, so it helps let my parents and my family come to a lot of the games and stuff. So that that part of it's really nice. Um, but it's all worked out great. <clears throat> explain explain to them a little bit because we talk a lot of football recruiting on the show, and I mean we're talking hat dances, you know, yeah. uh, and stuff like that. Baseball recruiting is so different, and I mean, you, you, kids at that freshman year going into their sophomore year. Um, are committing. So just tell them a little bit or explain to our, our listeners a little bit how baseball recruiting goes and, and how it's uh, so different from football. Yeah, I feel like football recruiting, a lot of the guys that um, 
they say they commit or whatever to a certain school, they still have like four hats on the table at signing mm-hmm. day. You know, I feel baseball is a lot different than that. Um, I think that the commitment kind of means a lot more, definitely, and kind of that people stick with it a lot more. Um, but also, I mean, it is crazy how young guys get recruited in baseball. And um, mm-hmm. even thinking back to myself, like I had no idea what I was getting into. You know what I mean? Um, but it turned out really good for me. But I think uh, it's definitely a lot earlier in the process and something that football might have figured out a little bit better than baseball is that the players kind of, I feel like, take their time more and um, evaluate their options a little bit more than baseball guys maybe. I think baseball is different for a couple of different reasons. Uh, you guys also have, especially if you're elite, an opportunity to flirt with the, the, with the MLB draft a little yeah. bit. What was that like for you, uh, the draft, recruiting, kind of at the same time? What was the decision-making process like? Yeah, so that's definitely another big thing that's different. Um, so my draft year was 2020, and so it was like the first year of the pandemic and all that stuff. And uh, the year before, 2019 draft was 40 rounds, and then going into 2020, it got cut down to five rounds. Um, and no one had – we didn't have a high school season or anything, so it was definitely a different year. But uh, – I have a lot of friends that have gone through it too. And um, like a couple of guys from Jackson, like Tyler Callahan and Hickey obviously uh, mm-hmm. came here, but um, yeah, the draft process is definitely uh, a lot to think about when you're an 18 year old kid, you know, and then trying to decide between that or the college you've committed to. Um, I think a lot of times it just comes down to money and stuff like that. But again, I think it's a decision like when you're 18, you don't really have any idea what you're getting into and you kind of got to lean on people you trust like your parents and um, maybe an advisor or something like that. But <clears throat> well, how tough was that? Um, I mean, you're getting ready uh, for your senior season of baseball. Um, I remember mine way back when, uh, back when we still used wood bass probably. Um, yeah. How hard is that to just, I mean, every, that pandemic was hard in everyone, but, but yeah, to lose your senior season of baseball. Yeah, definitely something uh, I kind of wish that didn't happen. But, mm. um, you know, I think it's all right. I had great three years at Bishop Kenny and I um, was lucky enough to be there my whole high school and just meet a lot of good people and play for really good coaches and stuff. So um, it was definitely disappointing not to be able to finish up with the guys I started with and everything. But, um, yeah, I mean, I had a great time at Bishop Kenny anyway, so <clears> – <throat> What was, what was the transition like to to playing college ball from not only high school but from sitting out that 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 season yeah. to you know to coming to the University of Florida just into a different game and just into a different team and then you know ultimately trying to get back into the groove of everything yeah so that summer um, right after the draft happened and I decided I was coming to Florida Sully called me and kind of set up um, we, I was gonna play summer ball with a team called the Scorpions in Orlando mm-hmm. um, we had a bunch of gators in that team it was like me Kirby Tommy Jack. Jack, Judd, yeah. um, Sterling came out for a little bit. And so that was really good. We got to play with a bunch of college guys um, and kind of feel out what college ball is like a little bit, get a little bit of a taste. And then um, coming into that fall is definitely a transition for sure. You know, every freshman kind of goes through that, um, just getting comfortable with like the speed of the game. And then also just kind of proving to yourself that, you know, you belong and everything. There's a definitely like a period when you first get here, all the freshmen try to walk out with bowed chests and puff up <laughs> chests and everything and show everyone that, oh, I should be here and all that stuff. But uh, it takes a little bit to just relax and be yourself. And then um, after that, it's pretty much smooth sailing. But <clears throat> it, what was how, – how was the move to, to second? Obviously, you know, you get to um, – if you get to Florida, you're probably – the shortstop or the starting pitcher, sure. you know, you're the best kid, you know, since T-ball. Um, if you're at a school like Florida, what was it like to get to campus and realize, oh, well, I have to – if I want to get on the field, I need to play, you know, a different position. And and what was just that acclimation period? Um, so something that I've always been preached to my whole life, really, and uh, there's going to be a time when you come across someone that's better than you and you better find a way to get on the field. Um, so my coach, Bob Shepard used to tell us that all the time. And, uh, so I really took pride my whole life in trying to just be a baseball player and know all the positions, um, and really put myself in a good spot where no matter who else is out there, like I can find a spot that I can play. Um, but definitely getting reps at second, um, after playing shortstop, your whole life is a lot different. I don't know if you guys are, have played a lot baseball less space, a, bunch, a, lot, but, a lot less space to cover there, Kobe. 
Yeah, a little bit for sure. But just the, the angles of the balls and stuff is a lot different. Um, right. So definitely takes some getting used to. But, um, yeah, I pride myself on being able to play all three infield spots. And then um, I feel like I know the game well enough. I could really play anywhere on the field. So that's something that uh, is super important to me for sure. Hey, well, what if we stuck you behind the plate? Yeah, I could mm. do it. I caught when I was little for sure. All right. Oh, I'd, man, I'd probably be a little bit of a learning curve, but, you know. I'm kind of man out there. <laughs> Catching is depressing, bro. Don't do it. Yeah, t- tell you that much. Mac gets beat up back there all the time for sure. So, um, well, Mac's crazy because Mac broke his hand last yeah. year and then caught the rest of the inning with a broken. Uh, hand. I know. Yeah, that, that guy's something mm. else. That's why he made it to the uh, to the University of Florida, Nick, and you yeah. didn't right there. Listen, uh, <laughs> yeah, Greensboro College hard. was a prestigious <laughs> Division three school, uh, and I won't, I won't, I won't take any slander. The Greensboro College pride. Yeah, I can see Nick if he had a broken hand at catcher, just calling straight changeups for like nine pitches in a row. Yeah, right. yeah, yeah. No, you know no, no, I mean? no. I'm I'm tapping out. <laughs> My hand's broken. Are you kidding me? Get the next guy in. <laughs> out of here. <laughs> I got God, yeah. Um. Uh. You it, also Sterling was an, was an infielder, so you and yeah. Sterling both. You know, obviously, like if you're if you're gonna if you can hit, you're gonna find a spot in the lineup. We just gotta figure out where to put you in the field. Um. So there were a couple freshman infielders that. Um, Colby had to move to second and Sterling uh, learning to play outfield last year just to get yeah. uh, just to get bats in the lineup. Yeah, definitely. What, um, what was your maybe uh, welcome to college moment? When did you feel uh, was it ever overwhelming or when did you feel maybe like, OK, I, I can do this. I can play here. Was it in the fall during practice? I mean, you're going against Jack Lefwich and Tommy and Franco Alamon's pumping at 90 something sure. and, and Sproats throwing 100. Uh, when was your moment where you thought okay i can do this I, I can play with these guys um one that really sticks out to me this might have been a little bit later um after i felt comfortable but uh facing hunter barco all throughout high school and stuff you know that guy i don't think i ever got a hit off him in high school really um and coming here and seeing him every other week or something um i remember i had like a backside homer off barco probably like three quarters of the way through the fall last year and um, that was huge for me. That was a big confidence builder for sure. Just because I remembered seeing that guy in high school and thinking that I could not touch his stuff at all. Um, and then being able to realize like, all right, like this doesn't seem like crazy anymore and uh, feel pretty comfortable in the box and stuff. That was a big moment for sure. And then um, in the regular season, I'd say something that kind of was a little bit overwhelming was the whole South Carolina series for for us as a team. And personally, you know, that was not, not the best weekend. <clears throat> you muted, Nick. South Carolina was a rough one. I covered the yeah. team. I remember that one. Um, well, tell me about – you didn't even mention this. I thought this might have been it. Um, FAU early on, first home run, yep, two RBIs, and then, and, then the, and then the next game against uh, FAMU on that Friday, another home run. Yeah, now that was a good week for sure. I think I had like <laughs> three homers in like – a week and a half or something. So you probably you probably <laughs> was expecting to get three homers like on those, on those two games, though, right? Right. No. Yeah. Yeah. No. <laughs> <laughs> Nick. Know. Nick, have you ever hit a home run? Plenty, Dan. Uh, you see all those baseballs? Those are all home runs back there. Oh, nice. Uh, those are the ones on you caught at Marlins nice, Park. Nice. Yeah. Yeah. That's, <laughs> that's on the little two hundred foot fence at uh, Little League. Some of those. Don't worry <laughs> about it, Dan. Kobe, what what stadium do you not like to bat, bat out of? Um. I don't know. Sometimes going like to like midweeks and stuff, the batter's eyes are rough. Like, mm. uh, you and F looks like a, a weird field. To yeah, play it's at. a little bit funky, but the ball kind of flies there too, so we like hitting there. But um, our park's huge compared to there, no doubt. Yeah. <laughs> You yeah, it's, almost like, it's, a, it's almost like Silly has a history of uh, recruiting really good pitching. And he was like, hey, let's yeah. give him a big park to uh, make right, sure that right. they don't give up any home runs. It makes sense, right? <laughs> Who'd you grow up idolizing? Who was your, your favorite player? Chipper Jones, hands down. Chipper. Chipper. Yeah. Mm. Yep. Grew up you a Bra- Brace, Brace fan? Okay, yep. okay. Huge okay. Brace fan. Well, where did you uh, – <laughs> Chipper, obviously, a switch hitter. Colby throws yep. righty, bats lefty. Where did that start? Yeah, uh, I think really when I was little, my dad, um, first he got me like a left-handed glove, and then I remember I'd like catch it and take it off and throw it with my right hand. And Nick so told me to do that. Tell him what I told you. Yeah, Nick told me to do that with my son when he was like two, man, some while. Yeah. I told I told Colby, I told Silk, I was like, hey, I don't know how you have to do it. If you have to like tie a belt to your son's yeah. right arm and stick it to his side, I'm like, 
your 401k might be a lefty pitcher. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah, but like that's against the law, Nick. Um, these kids know you have rights these days, bro. It, it's it seems like it's not so much illegal as it is frowned upon, and there's right. a gray area you can live in there. I feel that. I feel that. <laughs> Never mind uh, us, Kobe. <laughs> <laughs> we we are track here a little bit. Um, Kobe, um, if you can talk about it a little bit, um, you had to have uh, surgery in the off season. What yeah. was it like just playing injured um, last year? And and what was it? You know, managing the pain with the hip and um, and, and and I guess how much pain were you in? And, and how much do you think it hindered you? And and how much uh, I guess more of an advantage are you now that you're healthy going into your sophomore year? um so yeah the hip was something that had been bothering me uh for a while probably since like the end of my junior summer uh in high school and so I'd honestly kind of gotten used to it but um towards the middle end of the last year it was always something I just had to manage and um you know do my best like the, the worst part really was like when we go on road trips and stuff and be on a bus or just sit around for a while and get super tight and then really really achy that some nights couldn't sleep and stuff like that so kind of got to a point where um i just needed to get get it fixed and uh i'm feeling so much better now it's ridiculous i feel like good athlete again i kind of felt last year that at times i wasn't moving great just because of how much pain i was in and stuff um but i'm definitely feeling a lot better now and feel like three times the athlete i was last year so that, that's been really nice to be back to myself <clears throat> just uh, hitting 300 as a freshman in the SEC with uh, with a, a, a torn labrum in your hip. Right, so, right. Yeah. Yeah, no. I did not hit 300. No, no, no surprise. <laughs> um, Col Colby, what's it like? Uh, you know, I'm interested to see the transition because, you know, we talked to a lot of football players, you know, and they're very used to, to having the one game a week. You add a couple more when you get to college. Yeah. Um, but it's still, you know, one game a week. I mean, when you're when you're talking baseball, you're talking of playing probably 30 games in a high school season to playing upwards of 60, you know, plus that that moves into even after graduation and, yeah. you know, in, well into the summer. What's, what's that transition like while also trying to balance, you know, school uh, and life as well um, and, and focusing on, body maintenance and, and all of those things that, you know, that certainly change when you make it to the college game. It's definitely something uh, that you got to get used to and something that you got to learn how to do. I mean, 60 seems like a lot now, right? But then you go play professional baseball and the at minimum, like first year in the minor leagues, you're playing 130, 140 games. Um, so it's something that it's good to learn now, definitely. Um, and taking care of your body and stuff like that is something that's going to help you down the road for sure. Um, really is big. I was talking to a lot of the older guys last year about kind of just what to do to pace yourself early in the year. You know, you can't, as much as you'd like to, you can't go hit in the cage every day for three hours or your body's not going to make it through, um, stuff like that. So I don't know. It's definitely, um, a transition, but something that everyone gets used to. And also kind of just staying locked in for that long of a season. Um, it's definitely something that takes a lot of focus and, um, who's that guy? Who's that guy in the locker room? Where's the leadership coming from on this team? Yeah, I'd say there's a couple of guys for sure. Um, definitely Barco, Josh, Judd. Uh, I'd like to say myself a little bit for sure too. Um, but we've got a really good squad. Um, the team's really close, so it's, it's been nice for sure. <clears throat> um, getting Judd back, obviously not not expected, um, but yeah. great for you guys. Um and then obviously he gets a chance to play with Derek, uh, which they missed. You know when when Judd left high school a year early. Right. Um, the the offense and defense, like the hitters, you guys have a lot returning. I, I mean, there's really only one spot kind of open in left field, um, but there's a lot of young pitchers. Um, having gone through it and being a guy who played a ton as a freshman, um, how have you seen them progress from the fall to the spring? Um, and who are some of the guys you think, you know, you'll have to rely on as freshmen? Is that the bullpen or, or starting? Right. Yeah. So we definitely got a lot of pitching to fill. Um, but I've, I've been really impressed with this whole freshman class. It's the way they've kind of come in and um, kind of asserted themselves right away. I was really impressive for, for sure. And then uh, I think there's definitely a couple of guys, you know, uh, Philip Abner is one, no doubt. And then 
Pierce Capal, obviously super talented. Um, Carl Hartman. Uh, Carson Finvold's another guy that's come in and done really well that um, a lot of people might not have expected. And Fisher Jameson, you know, I think there's a lot of guys that are con- going to contribute. And then um, we've got a couple of guys coming back last year that didn't pitch a whole lot. But, I mean, we got Nezzy and Pogue and um, Ryan Slater too. So I think there's a lot of roles to fill, but a lot of guys are eager to step up and fill them. Um, and contribute. How, how good – I've talked to Sully about it a bunch. How good was Nick Pogue last year, um, obviously before um, having to have Tommy John surgery? Sully said he was right there with Tommy Mace. Um, and, and then how big would it be to get Nick back? You know, I, I'm guessing hoping by – probably by SEC play to get him feeling, you know, 100%. Yeah, Pogue, Pogue's nails for sure. He's a really good pitcher and um, it was a big loss last year. But we're really excited to have him back this year. I'm not sure about timetables or anything like mm-hmm. that, but I'm sure he's going to be back this year. And um, we're definitely excited to have him back. You know, it's a really good, experienced guy on the mound. And, uh, yeah. <clears throat> Colby, speaking of the mound and um, speaking um, kind of selfishly here, um, David Kopp joined the uh, the roster, uh, the coaching roster this, uh, this offseason. I know that obviously he's working heavily with pitchers. Um, a friend of mine from high school, but uh, what's the the reception been like with with David Cop joining the uh, the coaching staff? Yeah, Copper's a great dude. Uh, he he puts in a ton of work with those pitchers. Um, can't say enough about. You don't him. have to lie, Kobe. I know no, he's uh, Dan's friend. Don't lie. Man. <laughs> <laughs> no, Cop Cop's a good guy. I think anyone that knows him would say the same thing. And uh, he's got a really good work ethic. And um, yeah, nothing but respect for that guy. He's a good dude to be around. Always brings good vibes to the field and stuff like that. So he's been an awesome addition to the staff. That's all. Coral Springs High School doesn't produce a lot of athletic, uh, a lot of athletic players, as you can tell by myself. <laughs> but uh, every once in a while, we've got to, uh, we've got to pump the tires of the ones that we do. Right. Uh, well, Colby, Colby who, man, go ahead. Nick. I have one more. I got, who, um, uh, who's, who are some of the characters in the locker room? Um, like funny guys. Uh, I, I know the guys. Hickey's freshman year, they made fun of him because I think he put some weight on. He yeah. found relish. Um, yep. And, uh, that, and, that be, and that became as his. Most uh, freshmen do, yeah. <laughs> that became his uh, his his meal of choice. Um, yeah. What, what was what was Hickey like? I mean, dude could hit. Um, and, and then Sterling's another one to me that seems mm-hmm. like a, a little bit of an oddball. Um, almost like <laughs> Cal Ripken. He's he's got like a different swing. Uh, every time he steps up and you know steps in the box, but that doesn't make many outs. Yeah, no, that's Sterling's a pure hitter, no doubt. Um, doesn't matter where he's set up or how he's standing; he just finds the barrel. No doubt about that. But, but an uh, interesting kid. Yeah, definitely an interesting guy. We, <laughs> we were roommates last year, and um, but now he's become one of my really good friends. And um, yeah, kid rakes. You can't say anything else about it. You know. So he find, finds the barrel. That's a yeah, baseball lingo right there, man. Just barrels, like Kirby barrels. Kirby barrels. We gotta teach. We gotta teach Soaks some baseball lingo. Get Nick, Kobe. Nick, get, I, was, get, I, was, I was very good at the sport, Nate. When <laughs> in high school, bro, I was very good at baseball. I just didn't. I didn't care. I, like it was more girls at the football game. Kobe, do you believe him or no? You can be honest. Yeah, sounds sounds believable. <laughs> <laughs> what didn't like, sound believable was his tone when he said that, Silk. Oh, that's serious, man. That was an awesome shortstop. No, I believe I'm it. Sure. I can believe it. And Silk always Nobody believes me. I can tell. No, 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 no. no, no not a soul. Not a soul. Silk not always talks sure. about his baseball career. Mm, he wish you would have stuck with it. I wish I would have yeah. stuck with it for sure. Um, let's get out of here. Kobe, uh, Kobe we appreciate Kobe. you for hanging out with us, my guy. Yeah, no, thanks for having me on. And uh, absolutely best to be talking to you guys. Yep. Best right. of luck Friday season. and the rest of the year. Appreciate it. Thanks, guys. All right. See All right, brother. <clears throat> Kobe Halter from the Gators baseball program. Nick, I want to break down baseball a little bit more. Before we do that, let's give a shout out to our friends over at Game Time Sidekicks. Again, drinking out of one of these bad guys. Uh, this morning uh, because I needed some extra coffee. So shout out to them. If you are looking for the best vacuum sealed uh, cup in all of the game, visit GameTimeSidekicks.com. Use promo code STADIUM, get 10% off. Uh, Over 350 different schools, a lot of University of Florida things, a lot of things for 
uh, MMA and football player or NFL players as well. So check them out. GameTimeSidekicks.com. Vacuum insulated. Uh, great. Hold up very, very well. Um, so, yeah, go check them out. Stadium or um, sorry, promo code stadium. GameTimeSidekicks.com. Nick, you were at the uh, baseball scrimmage on Friday. I think there was one yesterday uh, as well that, that seemed to have some issues with with maybe weather and, and a missing umpire. But talk to us a little bit about the uh, the baseball team. What should we expect? And missing you know, are they expected? To... Yeah, I think they they had an ump that didn't show. Nick, you yeah. us a <laughs> is he missing or absent? Is he like on CNN? No, so uh, so I didn't check. You know, uh, <laughs> I, I didn't check. I didn't check the weather, but I'm, I think the entire time missing person's case. <laughs> yeah, I don't know, man. <laughs> This um gets kidnapped. I love it. Worry about I, I the game. Think, Where's this guy at, man? Was... Bro, the umpire, the umpire checked the weather. With the, he checked the the radar. So I didn't. Uh, obviously, you can, you can play football in the rain. You can't play baseball in the rain. Uh, they were supposed to play seven innings on Saturday night, and uh, umpire didn't show up. And of course, four innings into the seven, it starts raining, and they have to stop. I think the umpire was just like, you know what, this this check ain't worth it. I'm not going to go out there and I feel them on pneumonia. That. Is it an inner squad scrimmage? What's inner scrimmage? squad, yeah. Okay, so they, okay. they really um, – Sully does that differently. And and some of my friends who coach um, are like, they're scrimmaging the first day. I'm like, bro, they scrimmage every day. They practice for two hours, and then they do a uh, scrimmage. And you have to get some live at-bats. You have to have pitchers throwing to guys who are hitting, not just throwing in the bullpen. And you want your hitters to be seeing live pitching in, in a game action to, to get ready. Uh, for the season, and that's just something Kevin O'Sullivan does. So they have inter squatted probably ten times, fifteen times in, in the in the spring, and then in the fall all the time as well. Um, mm-hmm. So that's something they do a lot of. Um, it's interesting. So I got twenty twenty. Uh, Florida started sixteen and one. They returned a bunch of guys, and and I told big lies. Yep, you sure did. Yeah, big, yeah, yeah, I told yeah. I told big lies all heading up. Florida was the unanimous number one team heading into 2021. Um, and then wow, really season. just really just struggled. Uh specifically on the mound last year. I mean it had some hitting woes, but um finished with a 38 and 22 record. Um hosted a regional, but kind of barely hosted a regional, mm-hmm. and then lost to South Florida, uh Dan's Dan's Bulls and uh I I mentioned after the game that USF was not a very good team and had no idea that USF fans had a Twitter presence. But I do know. I, I know now. They're small, yeah. they're loud, and they're mighty, Nick. They were very all loud. 11 of them. They were very loud, and all of them were my mentions. And if there's only 11, then they created some multiple accounts because there was definitely more than 11 coming up my neck. So um, I won't go to Temple with you, and I won't go to Jacksonville with Dan. Is the yeah. 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 Yeah, no, um, Nick. Nick's not welcome. After all the slander he's had of Tampa, he's not welcome. I yeah. give the fine folks of Jacksonville an opportunity uh, to continue, <laughs> and I'm appreciative of the opportunity that they continue to invite me and, and show me different parts because, you know, I'm, I'm looking and hoping for Jacksonville love. So Nick Nick just disparages the city anytime he gets. Yep, yeah, uh, I can do without Tampa. Thank you. Uh, anyway. I can do without you. Anyway, so Nick, <laughs> what – uh, What um, – so obviously, I know you said pitching, you know, was a, was a downfall last year. Mm-hmm. A lot of young pitchers, uh, seemingly a lot of you know players that, that couldn't find their groove from the the year before. What's prospect looking like this year? Uh, where are they ranked preseason? Was it like number five, number seven? Was that was that right or? Neat um, I, graphics. Go ahead. Well, I let me see. D one baseball is one I stick with. So baseball has about I think there are six major ranking publications. So just for um, you know, uh, just for consistency, I just stick with D1 baseball. I think Kendall Rogers, Aaron Fitt, and the guys over there um, are are the best at covering college baseball, and uh, I stick with their rankings. So Florida, I think, was like 24th in Baseball America, um, but I think they are ninth in D1 baseball. Um, on, uh, if I'm being honest, six. I don't kn- – Six in which one? Uh, baseballamerica.com slash ranking slash college hyphen baseball hyphen. Were you were you listening to me at all? I just said I just said I, I we're sticking with d1baseball.com. Yeah, I know, but you said like, baseball. Because it's like 
America had him at 24. I was just correcting your fact error live. Oh, maybe perfect game. I, I, there's like I said, there's six of them. So I just <laughs> stick. I just I just stick with D1 baseball because there's a bunch. Um, I think you know Florida probably puts whatever has which picks whichever one has them highest. Probably a bunch of schools do mm-hmm. that. Pick whichever one has you highest. Um, that's what, That's what I used I to do doing. in the recruiting. Yeah, just go with whatever website got my team <laughs> right. Which, yeah. Um, so on the mound, um, I watched Hunter Barco last night uh, go five hitless, scoreless. He's going to be Florida's Friday night guy. Colby talked about him a little bit. Uh, big lefty. He has a chance to be uh, drafted really high after this season. Um, and, and then Saturday, <coughs> Sunday, you know, typically Kevin O'Sullivan has teams where – you, you know who's going to be Friday, Saturday, Sunday. Right now, I don't know if you've got guys really locked into those roles. I think you pencil in Brandon Sprout, another junior, or I don't know how you even classify these kids. He's a third-year player, but technically a sophomore because of the COVID year. Um, but a third-year guy in Brandon Sprout, he, he'll he'll you know put 100, 100 miles an hour on the radar gun, um, but needs to be more consistent throwing sliders and change-ups for strikes because at this level – you can throw 100, uh, but if you don't have anything else to throw and show with it, uh, guys will time it up. Um, and, and then Sunday, I think a guy that Colby mentioned, Pierce Capallo, can be, fill that role. Um, a sophomore in Timmy Manning's guy that can fill that role. And then there's just a, a number of, um, of freshman pitchers that Florida's going to have to lean on. And, and we kind of talked to Colby about it. It's a it's a long season, and, and you, you – kind of almost expect freshmen to hit a wall at some point because they've never really um, had to play 60 games and, and you know, take mm-hmm. a bus ride from Gainesville to Nashville, you know, be on a bus for 12 hours, get off the bus, practice, wake up the next day and, and, and have to play, you know, a top yeah. five team in the country like Vanderbilt. So um, I think there's going to be some growing pains and some learning curve uh, with the pitchers. Um, I can get into like five freshmen to know, you know, uh, offense and, and pitching. Um, but it's going to be interesting. The, the The strength of this team is going to be their hitting. You know, getting Judd Fabian back, he was the 43rd pick mm. in the draft last year, um, it is, is a steal for Florida. Never expected him to be on the team this year. We would expect him to, you know, be reporting to camp as a minor leaguer right now. And um, and I, for, I forgot why, Nick. They just couldn't come to an agreement on, on money. Is that what it was? Yeah, so um, – Basically, uh, the first 10 picks in the draft, every team gets a pool of money. And you've got basically a salary cap to fill and to sign these 10 kids. Um, Judd could have been a first rounder, wasn't. And and then after that, you know, the first round ends and teams start calling. And, and you give him a number and, and he had a number um, that he had agreed upon with a bunch of different teams. The Red Sox called and – the family told him, hey, we've got this number that a bunch of teams are going to si- – that have agreed to, and we're not going to sign for less than that. And the Red Sox said, sounds good. We can give you that. And they drafted him, and uh, they offered him a, a million dollars less than what they had <laughs> – the Real number quick. they had talked about. Yeah. I was, I was going to ask this while, while um, Kobe was on. Uh, how do you think the NIL could possibly affect MLB drafting? Because I know that's, that draft is big with those high school mm-hmm. kids. So how do you think it affects – uh, some of the top prospects maybe getting some NIL deals and, and going to college. Well, um, it, it could be. I mean, like Colby Halter has a bunch of NIL deals. Obviously, the mm-hmm. Gator Collective, he's got um, deals, I think, with like a, a bat company, um, a seed company. Like, There's a bunch of deals. But then when you look at um, what some of these guys are signing for, like the, the, the top, top guys in the country that get drafted, top 15 picks, you're making a $4 million signing bonus, like, yeah, but I think cool. I think that those top guys could probably get top NIL deals as well. Like I think like mm-hmm. the Archie Manikin, he plays football, but his deals are gonna be just crazily different. Um, I think we're gonna see some some crazy numbers at this this after this cycle right here. But I think could. the elite baseballs I, could probably get some like Gatorade or some big Nike deal. That, that I think I think we're I don't think it affects the elite guys. I think it might affect those fringe guys. The guy that's right, drafted right. at a high school in the tenth round. Right. Hey, do you want to sign for two hundred fifty thousand, or do you want to go mm-hmm. to a school like Florida, Vanderbilt, Texas, and now you're not playing, you know, um, on some single A or rookie ball team in Mississippi, mm-hmm. barnstorming through the South, playing right. one hundred and sixty games? You know, Vanderbilt and Florida, they'll they'll fly to some games. You're, 
Florida, the University of Florida, the facilities they have are better than probably the majority of mm-hmm. the minor league teams. So you can almost – okay, if I'm a fringe guy being drafted, I was going to – they offer me $150,000. Hey, I can go to Florida. I can go mm-hmm. to Texas. I can go to one of these schools, and I could probably make close to that and have a better quality of life. So I think right. it's, it's not really the elite, elite guys in high school, but some of those guys who – I mean, they're still elite. You know, they don't have like star rankings, but uh, mm-hmm. talking to Sully, he's like, hey, we have a bunch of five star, you know, air quotes, a bunch of five star pitchers um, on our roster. Um, so I think it's it's like those guys probably still. I, I hadn't even really thought about how much it would change because baseball recruiting is so different. Like you mentioned when we were talking to Colby with with the draft and things like that. But, yeah, definitely those guys in like the drafted 10th, 12th round, Florida had a um, a couple kids drafted, uh, you know, in the eighth, ninth round that ended up, you know, taking the money and not, not making it to campus. Hmm. Yeah, no, I, I think that that's interesting. You know, obviously, you know, baseball prospects fly under a different radar than than most, um, you know, college football players do. But I definitely think that there's, you know, an opportunity. And Nick, I think you make up, you know, a good point. Hey, do you take this, you know, $200,000 and, and go now as a signing bonus or do you maybe – you know, stick around for another year, still make some money um, and not have to live in, you know, I, I can crap on it, you know, Cedar Rapids, Iowa, you know, during the winter time, right? So, um, you know, it'll be interesting to see how that plays. Obviously, I think it's going to, you know, be a bit different and a bit slower than I think college football. But I, I do think that there's an opportunity for that kid that's, you know, not that first round or maybe that second round, but that that third or fourth round that's, you know, looking to, to make some money, but also says, hey, you know, there could be an opportunity for, you know, better improvement and certainly better quality of life in, in games. I mean, the best, the first, the first program, I don't know, like the capabilities. I know you supposedly don't supposed to use the uh, NIL recruiting, but uh, the first co- baseball coach to come. Allegedly. Care, allegedly. <laughs> you know, that, you know, it's just being used, but the first coach to use that as a recruiting uh, tactic and the kind of uh, uh, strategizing and, and recruiting that manner of, of, of gathering NIL deals to keep them, those French guys, and making that their thing, I think um, you get a powerhouse in baseball like there is in like with Bama and football. Um, outside of Vanderbilt, we know they and in, in the few. I think LSU has some good runs, right? Texas. Yeah, yeah, yeah. There's definitely um, uh, you know some blue bloods. You know Miami's a uh, you know a blue blood. I think they've, they've been down for a minute too, though. Yeah, they've been down. They're, they're, they're gonna be good this year. Power. I'm looking forward to that series. Florida down there in Coral Gables. Might have to get you to slide down so. I'm with it. I'm with it. Remind me. I'm with it. Um, but yeah, it, it's interesting. So like LSU is a, a, a great program, but then you've got schools out in you know in California. Cal State Fullerton's been mm-hmm. great. Long Beach right. State's been really good. Stanford's had great teams. Right. Pepperdine. Um, Pepperdine. Uh, they've been. They haven't been great. They haven't been really good in a while. But back in the day, and I remember. I remember in high school, I got a letter from Pepperdine, like a recruiting letter. Go up and look it up. That campus <sighs> is unbelievable it's like in the hills in malibu yeah oh it's not overlooking the pacific ocean yeah it's cool uh, it's like two miles from like downtown malibu um and you just have these like buildings that are like on cliffs that overlook the pacific mm-hmm. ocean it's like the crazy just wait just, the so just waiting for one earthquake and that that's that entire city <laughs> is off into the pacific one one big earthquake and malibu is gone right, i'm gonna add pepper then. dime to my uh my list of of, of dream visits Pepperdine, yeah. Listen, that just sounds uh, good. As shallow as I was in high school, Pepperdine, if, if they would have offered any money, I would have been gone. Gone. Mm. Um, but getting back to the team, it, it, the strength of, of Florida this year is going to have to be the hitters. And I think Judd Fabian is one of the best hitters in college baseball. People don't talk about Sterling Thompson enough. He was just a freshman last year, um, but hit over 300. He's going to be one of the best – outfielders and one of the best hitters in the country. Um, not just the SEC, but in the country as well. Florida against Chris Armstrong back. They've got three really good catchers. Colby mentioned Matt Gassetti. Um, he's someone who I, I think is a great hitter as well. Kendrick Callow's back for his senior year. Florida's pretty loaded when it comes to hitting uh, in defense. And, and I think you might get early on some games where Florida's scoring eight, nine, ten runs. Um, and, and that's really what Kevin O'Sullivan's hoping because – you want to bring freshman pitchers into situations, into a clean inning, to into starting inning. You don't want to have to bring them into a 3-2 game in the eighth inning and say, hey, it's your second appearance in college. Uh, there's a guy on second. It's a one-run game. 
don't blow it, you know, and toss them the ball. So uh, Florida really is going to rely on their hitting and their defense until, you know, you get some of these freshmen, uh, some experience and, and uh, you know, you walk into a game your first time and you're wide eyed and your heart's racing and your adrenaline's pumping. So uh, it should be a fun year. I think, I think it's, if you like offense, it's, it's a good team to watch. And uh, uh, Hunter Barco is going to be a, a guy on Friday nights to watch. And uh, I've been lucky to watch a lot of really good pitchers on Friday nights covering Florida the last uh, eight, nine years. I'm here for it, man. I love it. I love it. Well, let's get on uh, to a few other uh, things that are going on in Gator Nation. Uh, we talked about it last week uh, that we were expecting uh, to see it, but take a look at uh, – or sorry, an announce that Arliss Boardingham did uh, commit to the University of Florida on uh, Wednesday evening uh, at around 6.30 Eastern time, six foot four, 220-pound uh, I believe they're recruiting him as a tight end, four-star athlete on two four seven. Uh, that brings the Gators ranking up on the two four seven uh, to number sixteen uh, in the country. But Arliss Borningham uh, did announce his commitment to the University of Florida over Oregon. What are your thoughts on Arliss? So, I think it's a good get a guy that I think you mm -hmm. run. A lot of the route tree, athletic tight end, uh, probably our most athletic tight end since Kyle Pitts. Uh, that's not a scratch. Um, guy that ran track, 100-meter guy, wasn't isn't blazing fast, but he's fast for how big he is. Uh, they went out to California. We, we all got our eyes on Kerry Colbert to, to see how he recruits. Um mm -hmm. I wanted a DJ Allen kid out of Texas. We missed on him, but uh, this kid kind of had me nervous picking out the signing day. Well, but it seemed like we won over the mom in the recruitment. Uh, the family was really feeling the vibes of, of Florida, Florida, and what we offered. Um, overall, good get. Um, we finished this class at 16. I predicted out of the clear blue sky, uh, kind of in my homer bag a little bit, but I know these guys can recruit. I know Billy got that reputation as being a recruiter, but. I called my shot when, when Billy unloaded the clip and let all these guys go. I said that we probably finished with a top 15 class regardless, and, and we're right at 16. So um, good first, good, good transition class. Could have been better. We missed some spots mm -hmm. here and there, but we'll watch them 23 to see how these guys do. But uh, to come mm -hmm. in 16 after unloading the clip, good job by the staff. What's um What's your opinion on – because, I mean, I, I, I remember saying looking at – the class when Billy got here and y'all looked at me crazy. I was like, yo, you might have to like scratch this class and not, you know, give up on it. But I thought you'd have to be more heavy transfer portal. Um, and I think Florida will have to be more heavy mm -hmm. transfer portal. Uh, Billy's Billy's almost said it. Uh, he's like, it's free agency. And you've got two different like free agency periods. One, you know, like right after the season in the portal. And then listen, Florida's already over. Florida's at, I have, I have them at 91 scholarships right now. It'd be 92 with our list. So like, you're already you have to get to 85 by fall camp. So like there's already you already need to lose six, seven kids um mm -hmm. just to get to the 85. And Florida's gonna be a buyer when it comes to the you know the spring transfer portal mm -hmm. uh free agency period. So I think a lot of what we're gonna see in the spring is and it's not just at Florida, think about all the new coaches, uh USC, um, not Nebraska, probably should have been Nebraska, but USC, um, Oklahoma, all these places, LSU. Mm -hmm. You're going to get guys that stayed and mm -hmm. go through a spring with this new staff, and they're like, yeah, this isn't what I signed up for. Or coaches, here, here let, as well. let's keep it a buck. Yeah. There, there's going to be there's situations, and it might sound terrible, but it is what it is, and it's reality. You're going to go through spring, and a coach is going to tell you, hey, man, if you want to mm -hmm. play football, it's not going to be here. Um, yeah. and, and that's better now than it was because you have options like the portal, and you don't – when a coach told you that in 2005, that meant, well, I can't play football next year anywhere because i have to sit out a year so mm -hmm. at least there's options now for when that does happen the kids don't have to sit out a year um yeah i mean i think that you're gonna see some some probably older players you know transfer you know probably yeah. after graduation in the spring uh it makes sense if you're one semester away from graduating you're not going to transfer now um so i think that you're going to see some transfers there i think that you're going to see some encouragement uh, of some players and then i ultimately think like you guys said there's going to be some guys that say hey i gave it a shot this just isn't for me, uh, you know, but I still think, you know, Florida brought in, what, five or six guys in the transfer portal uh, this uh, this spring. I, I think that they're going to probably do 
something similar, which Nick, if you said we're already six over, you know, you need to be pushing 11 out to bring five. Well, I've got, I've got six over counting um, all of this freshman class and all of the, you know, freshman recruiting class isn't in yet. So right. Sure. I've got, I've got you over, you know, but those guys will be here for the fall. So you can be, you can, at some point you need 11 people out. Yeah. You could have, you know, a hundred guys, you know, technically on scholarship for spring practice. Um, you have to be at the, the 85 limit for fall. So mm-hmm. it, it's interesting because schools have, a lot of schools have done this. And Alabama is, you know, has gotten a bad reputation for forcing kids not to red shirt, but to gray shirt. Um, yep. and, and over signing schools are, have been over signing and Florida's really never done it. Um, this is the first year I've covered Florida where I think that they've kind nice. of over signed. Like so, so yeah, play the game, bro. Yeah, we gotta play the game. Everybody gotta, else is doing it. Yeah, yeah, get it. Yeah, be in it to win it, Nick. Yeah, so there's gonna be some more, uh, some more shakeups with the lineup uh, or with the roster. Still stuck. Who you got? Who, who, who do you who do you got on your uh, uh, transfer watch list? Ooh, this is a spicy segment. Then um, remember, I'll I had start, that, um, back I in the day when I had Jones. that. I had that Leon or uh, Carbrino list. <laughs> no, that's good, bro. That was wild. I was what a in, wild day. I was in South Carolina, and then we're looking. We're like, "Yo, where is where is where is Leon Orr? <laughs> and find out, yo, he's on a Greyhound currently. I'm at the game. He's on a a Greyhound bus currently going back to Gainesville. Well, he was on Twitter asking anybody anybody had a car rental plug. Woo, yeah, because so he didn't that. want to ride the Greyhound. Right. I don't blame him. All right, so who's on your car rental list? Emory Jones. Emory Jones, yeah. Um, and I want to disparage him. Like, listen, I've written a, a bunch of t- a bunch about Emory since, you know, he told Pete Thamel that he was going to go to the portal and he just wanted a place to develop him and, and an opportunity. Um, I don't think Emory Jones had a big change of heart. I think he, he's at the number five public university in the country and one semester mm-hmm. away from graduating. Right. How important is um, football to you? That okay, well, I'll, I'll transfer to, let's say Troy or UCF, um, mm-hmm. and and now I've spent nine semesters, uh, twelve semesters at Florida. I don't know semesters are off. You spent almost five years at Florida to go and then get a degree from UCF or from Troy mm-hmm. or from somewhere like that. It's like, hey, you can mm. go through spring, see see maybe you like it, maybe you do have a change of heart, maybe Emory Jones does choose to stay, um, but I think mm-hmm. he. I think he's a guy that will probably transfer after he gets his degree and more power to him. If you were a normal student, Dan, uh, your advisor would probably tell you, hey, if you're going to go to grad school, go to a different university. Mm-hmm. Yeah, no, I think that that one is, is probably pretty obvious and not to disparage anybody. Right. But I, I think that his transition out, especially with the addition of it's almost two, expected at this point. Yeah. With mm-hmm. the addition with the you know Jack Miller transfer with um, – Signing Max Brown, you have five quarterbacks. So I'm gonna tell you, I'm gonna six, to you. six on the roster. Six. But oh, I, six. But My apologies. Think, yeah, forgot about uh, Anthony, Del Rio. Yeah, Carlos Del Rio and Jalen uh, Kitten as well. Um, and, and I don't know, even if he does participate um, in spring, I don't know how much Anthony Richardson will be doing coming off of the the knee surgery. Um, so you definitely needed you know, an influx of just depth there. And I think you got that with Jack. Yeah. Um, I, I don't think Max Brown will be on campus for spring, but you'll, you'll have That's four guys you. really. If, 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 is he, is he on campus? I don't know if he is. Who Miller? No, no, no. Uh, Max, uh, oh, Brown. Max Brown. Oh no, Max Brown. Brown will not be on until the summer. Yeah. Yeah. So I think, you know, if, if AR is limited or, or can't play in the spring, um, which starts March 15th, by the way, um, then I think, you know, hey, you've got four, and that's probably what you need. Yeah. Yeah, I think quarterback uh, 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 leadership this offseason is very important. Uh, and I don't think Emory's buying in. And this is not no insider stuff. I just think he's on the outs. So a buy-in wouldn't likely be coming from him. But I, and, I, and I do think the importance of buy-in from the quarterback position is very high in, with staff changes and all that stuff. So – uh, it's going to be interesting to see how all that plays out with with the, the transfer, mm-hmm. uh, the injury with AR. I mean, I'm sorry, the injury with AR, mm-hmm. uh, spring, all of that. I think I just think this is something we all should be watching. 
Yep. Uh, who you got? Um, your I list? wouldn't be su- I wouldn't be surprised if there's a transfer at, at running back. You know, I right. know Lorenzo Lingard is already transferred from Miami to Florida. Uh, so if he were to transfer, unless it was a grad transfer, he'd have to sit out. Uh, Naquan Wright doesn't seem to be like a guy that, that's tweeting a lot of happiness. Uh, yeah, recently, but Naquan's but, been been his feelings. But but no, what media. I was saying is like I got here. I do think that somebody is going to to leave the room, right? Um, and I'd probably put Naquan at the top. Yeah. Um, just for the simple fact that Ling- Linger can't uh, transfer right away and play. Right. Uh, also, Linger's going to get to play spring ball, so he's going to have the heads up on on, on Naquan. Uh, with that freshman transferring from Louisiana, Montreal I think he's Johnson, probably, yeah. Montreal mm-hmm. Johnson's probably the leader in the room. Uh, you still have some talent with Bowman and Linger. Mm-hmm. They'll have the, the advantage of playing spring over Naquan. Uh, just on the surface, looking at the unhappiness being tweeted from Naquan, not playing spring because of the injury. Um, I think he comes into the fall behind on the depth chart. Uh, just, just thinking that way, and he may want to bolt and get some immediate playing time, get some film to go to the league. Some more film. He got film yeah. already. But I think that Naquan would have some some good opportunities to transfer to some, oh, some no pretty decent schools too. Um, he's put a lot on on tape that that teams could get excited about. So. Um, any other positions? I can't think of any other spots. In particular, that they are or, or not. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Uh, tight end, maybe. Yeah. Yeah, I could see Zip um, being a guy, maybe. Um, mm-hmm. I, I thought I was told, and uh, that Zip and Gamble were both thinking about it. Obviously, Gamble being uh, a graduate already, a little different uh, spot, but that might be someone. Um, so. I don't know. You're gonna you're gonna find a bunch of guys, and I mean, there's there's also like Florida's got two long snappers on scholarship right now. Um, you don't need that. I don't even know if you need one on scholarship. Seems like a lot. Um, but but you've got two. Um, and then maybe guys who were in the portal and then back out. You know, Lloyd Summerall was one. Um, Dante Xander's guy. Those two entered the portal and then came out of the portal. Um. So there's going to be there's going to be moves. I mean, there, we, we, we said it. there literally has to be moves because uh, you're over the limit right now. Yeah, so I guess we'll see. I mean, obviously, there's not going to probably be any transfers between now and what, April 19th. When's the spring game? 16th, April 16th. 16th. So after that, you might start to see some names enter in the portal. Uh, but until then, uh, I guess we'll see. But uh, we do have uh, – Billy Napier had a press conference on Friday. Nick, do you want to give us kind of the uh, overarching themes of, of that uh, press conference? They're entering a different phase is my understanding. Yeah. Uh, we're going to talk to Billy. So there's eight phases in his program, um, and we're going to talk to him before each one of them. Um, he does not – really get into specifics at all about anything um i think what i really took away from the press conference was uh the spring game is march or the spring camp starts march 15th um patrick tony is calling plays um sean spencer will have some input but it's tony's defense he's calling it um and then i i kind of i even asked him i said like what specifically is this phase, the identity phase, and uh, no specifics were offered, but it's really just some really tough workouts in the indoor. The team is around them, or the coaching staff is around the team. Uh, I think they're trying to create adversity. They're looking for leaders to to show themselves, to develop, Um, and I think right now is kind of, you know, you remember remember when you're playing sports and you'd have those practices where you would get team bonding just because it was so hard. And you're like, yo, I hate these coaches right now. And that's like you almost as a coach make yourself the enemy to kind of rally the team around you. Like you're going through that kind of that kind of tough workouts right now, I think is what they're doing. Yeah. Yeah, no doubt. I mean, I'm ready for some spring football. I'm ready for some practice. <laughs> when when does practice start, Nick? I'm sorry, you might have said it. March fifteenth. Oh, so we got another month. Just getting these locks. I want. I want to. I want to start breaking down like Tony's defense a little bit. What to expect? Mm-hmm. Um, uh, position changes. If if guys going to be shifting, moving, or being playing something different. 
uh, in, this, in his style of defense. I want to get into that type of stuff now that um, we know he's calling the plays for sure. We already had that in our minds a little bit, but it's, it's for certain on paper. Um, and then also styles of offense and all that. I think the style of offense mm-hmm. is, is a reason Zip may be one out. Uh, we see the type mm-hmm. of tight ends and, and the way tight ends play in this offense. It's not a whole lot of H-back, smaller tight end stuff for a guy like Zip. Uh, to be Hand in the dirt. Offense. Hand in the mm-hmm. dirt, get, nut, get, get muddy. Not glamorous. No, not not glamorous at all. No. Um, let's see here. Uh, a couple of announcements uh, as well from the football team. Uh, we never mentioned it, but off-field staffer, running back analyst, uh, Corey Bell did accept an on-the-field role a few weeks ago uh, with FIU to be their defensive backs coach or cornerbacks coach. Uh, so best of luck to him. You know, he's a guy that we thought could get poached and, and would get poached at some point. Uh, but congratulations uh, to him. And then Paul Pasqualoni, who was in charge of uh, advanced uh, scouting, um, is moving on into su- what I thought was surprising, what the internet also thought was surprising, uh, to be the new defensive line coach uh, for the Carolina Panthers at 70 years old. About 50 years of NFL experience, or of coaching experience leaving uh, that room, I know he was a guy that uh, Billy Napier kept on very early uh, on in his tenure, so definitely a guy that thought was respected. Um, I have no hot take or opinion on how that affects the program in one way or another other than obviously a well-respected guy, and, and certainly this is, is probably maybe his last final big opportunity, so so best of luck to him as well. Yeah, and that that's one that I asked Billy about because that's – I mean, we've gotten, like, like we've said, fast and loose with these job titles, and Pasqualoni was the – head of advanced scouting and self-scout. Yeah. Um, so I asked Billy, I was like, hey, was that a position that you just like made up because of Paul Pasqualoni's experience and like his unique um, place? I mean, 50 years, this will be his, coming up, will be his 50th year coaching football. Uh, and he was like, yeah, no, Paul's wisdom and um, everything he brought to the table made it unique for that role. And he basically said, we're trying to fill it, but it might take two or three people to fill that role that Paul Pasqualoni was going to fill. Hmm. That, I think that just speaks to the knowledge and, and, and the kind of coach that Pasqualoni is. But listen, 72 years old, um, you're getting a chance to get back on the field. This might be your last chance to get back on the field. So I think Billy, uh, as much as Florida didn't want to see Paul leave, um, happy for him to get the opportunity. Yeah, it was surprising. I didn't think <laughs> yeah. that was surprising. I thought Paul. I thought Paul was just enjoying Florida weather. You know? <laughs> just retiring, retiring. He was just a yeah. Suburb. Drive up to the um, what do they call it? The village. Drive to oh, the, the village. Down to the villages. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Just, just <laughs> a smooth transition, Dan. That's what I. That's what I was expecting. So shout out to that. We'll see uh, what off the field titles we get in the new hires. Uh, and shout out to Corey Bell, man. Yeah. The guy that deserved to be coaching on the field in some capacity. Yep. Um, so happy for him as well. Yeah, so the, the Gators have, I think they, they lost the, the one analyst early on uh, back to uh, Louisiana, but the Gators have lost three of their support staffers uh, during this offseason, which I imagine is going to be a constant churn um, every year of, of people looking at, at new opportunities. But uh, we are excited to welcome on uh, – Marcus Castro Walker next week, who'll be our first staff member from from this staff to to talk a little bit more about NIL and what the university is doing there. Uh, but uh, but congratulations to all those involved to uh, to elevate from being an off the field guy to an on the field coach, no matter where you are or what your background and experience are, uh, are always worth congratulations. Uh, let's give a couple of other uh, kind of housekeeping. Um, the on Wednesday it was announced that four former Florida Gators are going to be participating in the NFL Combine. Uh, including Zach Carter, Kyer Elam, Jeremiah Moon, and Damian Pierce. Um, I don't have the stats pulled up in front of me, uh, but Damian Pierce, I know, was a standout player uh, from the uh, the Senior, Senior Bowl, Bowl last weekend. I'm a guy that got rave reviews by everybody and everybody asking. The question that we on this podcast asked every week for, I think, about two or three years was, why isn't Damian Pierce getting the ball more? So uh, were you guys surprised that Malik Davis didn't get an invite to the to the combine, um, I think I, I think he get one over Moon. Um, yeah, 
Not, not it had to be either or, but right, yeah. Um, I, I was I was very shocked to see uh, Jeremiah Moon get a get a combine off uh, invite, which I think it's, he's gonna do very good at. It, yeah, it's um, I mean that that's just a premium position, you know. At, mm-hmm. In the NFL, you need an elite quarterback. You need uh, somebody to protect to protect that elite quarterback in in, in terms of a, a tackle. Um, and then you need guys who can get after the quarterback, and those are the premium, premium positions right now. And you look well, at I would Jeremiah think that Moon. Production, like production, and like film, should matter as well. Yeah, absolutely. But like, I think you look at Moon, and I mean, like the Jim Nagy at the Senior Bowl has been in love with Jeremiah Moon, and I and so have we. Not, <laughs> and not to be disparaging, but I'm like, I don't get it. Like he can't stay healthy. But if you look at him, he's like six foot five. He has he's got speed. He can play with leverage. If he's healthy, he's a guy that can get after the quarterback. And I think NFL teams see that and say, hey, maybe he just was in a terrible weight weight program. Maybe he just has some bad luck. If we can get him into our system uh and, and lifting and keep him healthy, this might be a guy that can be a double digit sack guy for us. So I think a lot of Jeremiah Moon, because you haven't had the production, is projection. Yeah, I don't think it has to be either or. I just thought – I do think that Malik Davis should have got an invite uh, just from production alone. Uh, I thought I thought he put enough on, on film uh, very, ever since his freshman year. He dealt with some injuries, but uh, I think he finished it up pretty strong as mm-hmm. far as health-wise that he, that he deserved an invite. But he'll be fine. Yeah, I think there was 324 invitations, so the Gators get four of those. Um, I, I was surprised about Jeremiah Moon, and I was also surprised about Malik Davis. I did think that uh, Luke Davis probably earned it, the opportunity. Another another senior bowl guy that's been out there uh, making some some good news, and people been talking very positive about is Gene Delance. Yep. Not yeah. senior bowl. He was a uh, shrine shrine bowl. Shrine bowl. What are, one of those bowls? Yeah, one of the off season bowls. Fifty six. Would you guys be surprised if Gene Delance doesn't have a decent NFL career? What? No, yeah, sorry. Yeah, phrase that. Would dude. you be surprised if Gene Delance had a productive NFL career? I would. I, w- I would be very surprised. Um, but that'd be like par for the course because how many linemen we're getting in the University of Florida that, that just don't look good and we talk crazy about, and then they go have solid NFL careers, undrafted mm-hmm. or drafted. So, I think that that's where this is going. Um, Right. I mean, everything that I'm seeing and reading about Gene Delance is that he's improving. You know, he had a great game against Jeremiah Johnson at FSU. You know, at times last year, look at him in shackles. I called it. Yeah. 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 Throughout throughout last season, there was times that he looked really, you know, significantly better. And then all we've heard for the last two weeks is he's at this uh, at this bowl game for seniors is that, hey, you know, this Gene Delance guy maybe ain't that bad. That'd be something. The three star whisperer, whisperer, have you seen? <laughs> he gets them good enough just when they're about to leave. Like when they're leaving, like the last game versus Florida State, that three star that we've been uh, polishing and molding, he's good enough to go to the league, but it hasn't done us any good. <laughs> no, no, that, that's for sure. <laughs> and unless you want to get, unless you want to, you know, puff your chest out on the timeline about how many Gators are in the NFL. Other, other than that, it's not, it's not yeah, doing a slap for me. It's not, say. yeah, it's not doing uh, Gator football two much. Oh man, you're watching on YouTube. We got all kinds <laughs> of dance. <laughs> Sorry, that was my, that was my bad. I, man, uh, he brought, he brought the hamster over internet. to the new spot. No, I didn't. No, I accidentally clicked off my internet and just shut it right off. Just mid conversation, dumb me. Your uh, internet has been working better. Uh, I yeah, say that. tell you what, tell you what. But uh, no, I'm excited to see what what Gene Delans might be able to do. Um, I don't think that he's going to get drafted, but certainly put himself in a better position now than than before. No doubt. Let's see what else do we have going on here. Um, uh, shout out to Aaron Jackson. I uh, just got gold medal mm-hmm. in the Olympics. Uh, first U.S. Olympic speed skater. Uh, to medal since I believe 2010 when Shawnee Johnson yep. did it. Um, mm-hmm. She was a, a former inline skater uh, that moved to speed skating. Uh, she got her master's de- or, uh, her bachelor's degree with honors uh, in engineering from the University of Florida uh, some time ago. So congratulations to to Aaron Jackson on 
winning a gold medal. She's the only SEC athlete competing um, in the 2022 Beijing Olympics. She also is the first black woman to medal in speed skating in the w Winter Olympics. And oh, she, she black? Oh, I'm going to have to yeah. start watching that, Nick. I there you that. go. Um, Are y'all watching the Olympics at all? No. I'm, I'm, I am I'm. love the Olympics. Um, way more summer Olympics. Curling is electric, so we got to get you in on the curling. No, I I, I, I had a, a year of curling where I was really into that. I thought it was Probably four years ago. The USA, USA won four years ago. Yeah, a lot of touch, man. Yeah, that was the year that I was like really like the timeline had me like invested in in curling. That was eighteen, yeah. The U.S. men won curling. Uh, Dan, won do you gold. think you think the uh, Tampa Bay Lightning will let us try curling at their facilities? I want to try it out. Um, probably not at their facilities, but I'm sure <laughs> at one of the other ice rinks around Tampa we could try. Okay. So, so it's like, hey, uh, when we're at that game, do you think they'll go intermission? Like, give us the next ten minutes so we can throw some stones on the ice. Uh, so we hang out after the game. game. No, I'm I'm not gonna lie, guys. I think I right, told you the story. Bomb. I saw a uh, curling one time when I was traveling for work in Canada. Um, it may be fun on TV, and I get it. It's kind of unique and different. But I don't know if I've ever been more bored at a sporting event in my entire life than watching curling. Like no, I'm not watching receiver. randoms curl. <laughs> oh, <damn. laughs> <laughs> I want to I participate in it, but I don't want to watch random people. It's not like watching a basketball game at the park. Good uh, those, grief. those could get good, man. But I don't want to watch that random boring sport. I want to participate in it, though. I want to try it out, see if I got the touch. It's see, touch you say sport. you say, you say that, and, and I say that too. Like after the last after 18, I was like, oh, give me four years, I'll definitely be on the Olympic team. Right. And right. then like and then walk on ice. Just try to yeah. walk on ice, and, and I, you know, look like a fish out of water. These guys are like gliding around on one foot, just like pushing themselves, just sliding around on. I'm guessing they're not normal tennis shoes. That there's like a curling oh, no, no, shoe. No. Yeah, they're 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 different uh, different shoes. It's a uh, it's a wildly precise sport um, that I don't think a lot of people give it credit for either. But uh, uh, Spencer's Jordans. in our chat as well, saying biathlon. That one's wild. Um, it's cross country skiing, and then you have to go and you have to shoot some targets. Um, cross country make... skiing is, is is bull. That's not skiing. You're like on skis, hmm. walking. Yeah, that it cross country awful. skiing is no joke. The oh, worst part about hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. What am I missing? Cross country skiing. What is that? So it's exactly it's when it's what flat. it sounds like. Yeah, it's, it's it's a flat surface. There might be some some downward part of it, but that's when you're you know you're you're just basically just gliding on a Flat piece of earth. Pause on that. Hey, racing, there, Dan. Yeah, yeah. That, racing. That wild hand movement. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's why you need to watch there on, you go, on you go, YouTube. Too. That's why you need to watch on YouTube to see Dan to see no, Dan's I, cross country uh, technique. So I don't, I don't totally know all the rules of biathlon, but there's it's are they a racing? It's a circle course. They're, they're all racing, and then they have a rifle, an air rifle. And they're shooting at targets, and then if on they skates, no, on, on skis, skis, there's skis, skates, whatever. So yeah. they're skiing and shooting. Yeah, yes. well, yeah, well, they go down to the ground and then shoot, and then they see you. You kind of have to watch it, but the funny part YouTube. is, this is, is if they like this. Is sounds crazy. If they don't hit a certain number of targets, they have to do a penalty lap in this like little circle. Um, so yeah, well, the whole the whole thing with precision shooting is controlling your breath and being accurate so the, the difficulty in the biathlon is you're not like skiing downhill and letting gravity help you you're skiing around in a circle propelling yourself um getting your heart rate up and then you've got to try to figure out how here's now question. here's my question nick yeah y'all high school offered this sport in south florida cross-country skiing <laughs> sure didn't sure sure did not uh, they cut we, funding for it right before Nick like, was which, there. Which yeah. high school offers this? Any anybody like answer this on the show? Do y'all high school offer this sport? Like, what do you learn to play this at? Is there so a little the, league for this? So, so like, <laughs> not to not to take away not to take away uh, right, from this? Aaron Jackson, but there's probably a reason she's the only SEC athlete in the Winter Olympics. Uh, not a lot of Winter Olympic training uh, going on. Not a lot of bobsledding in Alabama. To practice on, right, right, uh, right, right, right. I don't think there's any, not that I knew of, uh, not any cross country skiing courses in 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 Broward, Florida, uh, to mm. practice on. So this is a, more of a northern um, high school athlete, you know, 
I think everyone on the curling team is from like uh, Minnesota. Yeah, that sounds right. They just look so, like a bunch of guys that just kind of met at the bar and said, you know what, guys? Yeah, let's go fool around. Yeah. You know, hey, you know, one of their friends, you know, is sober. They're like, hey, guys, I don't think I'm going to be able to join you at the bar anymore. He's like, you know what? Let's pick up an activity to do instead. And then curling, you know, magic. It, oh, it sounds thing. like an activity, Dan. That's what it yeah. sounds like. Uh, curling curling appears to be, it probably isn't, but it appears to be a sport you could play with a six-pack. It seems like all these sports are for, like, 30-plus men's league that, like, yeah. watch dads that are bored bored and shit like hey that olympic gold medal is still an olympic gold medal oh for sure for sure i'm trying to see all, all the olympic sports i think i can still be an olympian with some of these activity type sports is what i'm saying <laughs> I, I think go. one that we'll have to to talk about the next time the summer olympics comes around that's uh, one of my favorite sports to, to just kind of shake my head at and that's uh, olympic speed walking oh uh, that was the best that's the that's craziest wild. That that's wow. nuts. I mean, just the movement and everything else. I don't know how their hips aren't, you know, completely knocked out of socket, but uh, they that's that's something ridiculous. else to watch. Absolutely most, most, ridiculous. Of, most of the summer games are respectable activities, though, man. It's nothing, nothing too egregious. Leading into, walking. Leading, into walking is leading into a manscaped ad a little too early. Speed walking. What kind of chafing do you think you get with that, Ooh, that speed change. walking motion? Yeah, a lot of big not, not, right there. Big, big not if you chain. have the ball deodorant, though. <laughs> nah. You got that ball deodorant, you might not start a fire, but without it, you definitely going to uh, start the fire. Lot. Yeah, it's a lot of friction, I, Nick. I, I need to let the boys at, at Manscaped know that next time we chat that that could be a great sponsorship opportunity for them. Yeah. The ball deodorant at the speed walking metal games and whatnot. <laughs> <laughs> The twenty. What, what's the, what's the next? You don't make. Day? You don't make the cover of the Wheaties. You make the cover of the ball deodorant. <laughs> <laughs> now we have the speed, gates, <laughs> the speed walking gold medal presented by Manscaped. Shout I think it makes perfect sense. Manscaped. Yeah, might. It's so Valentine's Day, take, man. Uh, take us into Manscaped, ladies. Kind of late now, but Valentine's Day would have been a great opportunity to get that man in your life some ball deodorant so he can walk fastly and frivolously and, and aggressively through the mall and other places without calling friction or fire. Uh, be sure to use coupon code SG20. Is that it? 20SG. Okay. 20SG. There we go. Uh, be sure to use coupon code 20SG at checkout for 25% off, free shipping, uh, the ball deodorant. Season is right around the corner. February is probably your last month in February in, 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 in the year where you can get some cool months. And then we're right into the spring next month. So uh, ball dealering up, fellas. Yeah, and then uh, we didn't give a shout out to our friends over at Home Field Apparel. Check them out. Use promo code Stadium and Gale, all one word. You get 15% off of your order as well. Uh, I know we're planning on having a orange and blue uh, tailgate that uh, that Corey and TJ are taking the lead on planning. We'll have some more details as those come around, uh, but I'll be there. Nick will be there, uh, and obviously Corey will be there as well, so we'd love to see you there. Um, shout out to uh, one of our listeners who last week said, um, hey, we would love to put all of our songs in the week on a Spotify list, and, and he's taking uh, that endeavor on. So let me give a shout out to him. His name is Joey. So right now, if you want it, it's 64 songs deep. Um, nice. But, uh, but we did we'll not. Uh, well, obviously, you guys have been doing it a little bit longer than me, but uh, listening to the playlist while driving around Gainesville, um, clear that we have not thought about Song of the Week being a playlist because mm -hmm. the vibe, the yeah, vibe yeah. is all over the, the board. Yeah. Listen yeah. to that. Yeah. You go from like EDM to country to like some silks, R&B. Um, you you mm -hmm. definitely know when Dan's, when it's Dan's song, though. Big fiddles. Yeah, yeah big fiddles. <laughs> Yeah. Shout out to uh, song. shout out to our friend. Uh, I'm not going to say his name because he wants to keep his identity. But uh, imagine <laughs> he wants to keep his identity. Yeah, he wants to keep his identity off of the internet. Um, the Imagine Wagons is what he uh, called my favorite band, so I thought that was pretty solid. Shout out to my guy with the cat profile pic. Imagine Wagons. The Imagine Wagon. Uh, I do think it's my uh, my turn. Are we missing anything else? Uh, before we uh, before we close out for this week and uh, oh who do you guys uh, got for the Super Bowl? Say what? Oh, Super Gator Bowl. softball started their season. Um, yep. I think they play again today. Obviously, you know we're the Sunday morning that we're doing this, but uh, Gator softball won Friday. 
beat Michigan um, on Saturday. They are 3-0 heading into their Sunday game. They're playing in the uh, tournament at USF. And they'll be at home this coming weekend uh, to open. Uh, it's another tournament, but to open up uh, at KD Seahole. Seahole? No. I've never been able to no. say it. I got a lisp. I got to teach y'all yeah. how to pronounce everything every week. This is getting stressful. That was nuts. Yeah, let, let it be known that Nick was the only one that didn't know Trevor Etienne's or Etienne's name. Bro, that was, yeah, He's got no, me I've, seen, I've it. seen that. I've yeah. seen that. I've gotten I've gotten hell on the timeline for that. And for the tailgate, any any artists out there, um, muralists, painters, mm. uh, Gainesville, if you're interested in, in hanging out with us uh, at the tailgate, um, we're gonna kick some different vibes. It's gonna be uh, it's not like we're just not gonna sit around and eat hot dogs. It's gonna be some vibes. So. Uh, <laughs> Logo artist, hit us up. Let's do it. And then uh, shout out to Jenny Rowland and her team. Uh, they beat LSU on uh, Friday uh, in a big uh, top five matchup uh, with them. Uh, so that was a, a great win for them. Uh, women's basketball is ranked. We talked about that last week. Uh, we are getting the head coach on next week. So we're super excited to bring her on. And Cooking. Trying to think if there's anything else that we're missing uh, that we need to give a shout out to. Uh, if not, uh, let's play. How about my boys Crawford and Power? Um, Silk, you'll like this song. The song is She Liked to Get High. Oh, it sounds like my bag. Mm -hmm. Sounds like my bag. It's my it is. Maybe a couple fiddles, but uh, ultimately, She Liked to Get High. Mm. Crawford and Power, great song. Boys. Shout out to the chin guitar. Dan's got a little fiddle diddle for Silk. She likes to get high. Yeah, just report back next week. Let me know what your thoughts are. I got you. I got you. Right. Bro, there's no oh. way Silk listens to that before we record next week. I'm about to play that right now. What do you mean? Like, I'm vibing. <laughs> it's a beautiful Sunday, man. Uh, the weather is getting a little better. Uh, we're going to leave these kids home alone. Um, they got to figure out like figure it out like Macaulay Culkin. Me and the wife going to hang out. So I'm going to play some of this, 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 this fiddle music by Dan. I think you'll Big like picks. it. Oh, and before we do that, Super make sure you Bowl, check Super us Bowl out. Picks. Super Bowl picks. Yeah, but um, let's do Super Bowl picks. Florida has the most active players um, of anyone, in, of any college in the Super Bowl. On the Spangles, you've got Fred Johnson, Vernon Hargreaves, and Evan McPherson, who is 12 of 12 heading into the Super Bowl um, on mm. field goals. And the Rams have Van Jefferson and Brandon Powell. Brandon Powell has turned himself into a nice little NFL career, you know? Yeah, sure man. has with the, with the Lions and now with the the Rams. Uh, always a guy that I thought was a little bit, uh, you know, underutilized at the University of Florida has, has really turned into a nice NFL career for him. His brother used to remind us on Twitter every morning. Oh, that's right. Now he's laughing all <laughs> the way to the bank. Yeah, yeah. Uh, who do you guys got so. tonight? I uh, give me. I gotta go with the Bengals. Shout out to Big Fred, Royal Palm Beach alum. Uh, we out here a little bit. So I'm going to go to the Bengals. I like the young boys. I had the Bengals since the beginning of the playoffs for some mm -hmm. odd reason. Um, I'm going to go. I'm going to go Rams. It's mm -hmm. uh, uh, it's funny. My, my my buddy, I'm best man in his wedding coming up uh, a week from today. We were out in Vegas for the bachelor Woo! party. Big responsibility right there, Nick. You got the yeah. ring now. He gave it to yeah. you. No, no, oh. they would never trust me with that. <laughs> never. They barely trust me with a microphone to give the speech at the at the reception after. It's a lot of pressure. Um, so he he is a huge Lions fan. We were out in Vegas and uh, may have had a couple drinks. He tried to bet the under Lions win title, parlaying yeah. it with the Rams winning the Super Bowl and the NFC. And for some reason, uh, might have been user error based on the alcohol consumption, but they wouldn't let him uh, bet it. And I can't even, we can't even imagine what the odds would have been on that. And if the Rams win, he might have been out, you know, uh, thousands of dollars because we couldn't figure out how to make that bet. Hmm. But I'm going Rams. I want, I want the Bengals to win. I think the Rams are going to, but I'm going to be rooting for the Bengals today because it's a, you know, right. it's a city that still idolizes uh, chili. bad chili. Right. Um, Wild chili. There's Just somebody out there with a with a wild bet of they they take a bath in, in chili uh if if the Bengals want it. So um they made sweet chili, so I don't even think that's a big of a threat. Mm. Real spicy chili then now we're talking, but sweet chili ain't I just, I, I just can't can't understand the skyline love. Um mm -mm. 
But I do think the Rams are going to win. Um, I think that their defensive line is just incredible. I think that they just have a really good team. So um, we see some Gators with some Super Bowl ring, rings at the, the end of this one. So I'm just hoping for a, a, a good, fun game. So No doubt, no doubt. Same corner, same time. We same corner, same time. Oh, before we before we head out, make sure you you like us and subscribe us uh, on YouTube. Uh, that show goes up after we record, so today it'll be up on Sunday. Uh, normally, it's up Monday night if that's what you're looking for. Um, and also, make sure you check out uh, the blog. We have a, a number of great writers. Connor Clark is leading that up as our editor in chief over there. But we've had a lot of guys that have done some great interviews with guys that have committed. Uh, some great stories about following up on bets. Uh, just some some really good uh, stories that uh, are shaken in the the world of women's basketball, track and field, a lot of other sports other than what we just talk about uh, on this show each and every week. So check that out at stadiumandgale.com slash blog. Uh, a lot of great content being uh, pushed out there. So other than that, same corner, same time next week, boys. Boom, 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 boom. Boom.